our programs or to join NAMI Hunterton, the voice for mental health in Hunterton County. One of the biggest decisions in your lifetime is buying or selling a house. Choosing a realtor with strong client communication, technology, and marketing skills will dramatically improve your chance of success. That's why Hunterdon and Somerset's residents rely on Joe Peters. Joe believes his clients deserve a smooth and seamless experience, not a roller coaster ride. As a Coldwell Banker sales associate with 20 years of experience, he's helped hundreds of people to achieve their goals and dreams, no matter where they were in the buying or selling process. Joe accomplishes this by approaching every transaction from a business perspective. Initially, he tries to fully understand your goals and dreams and make them his own. Then he takes the mass amount of data that's available and distills it down to a few understandable action points. And finally, he controls the entire process through technology and marketing. The end result to you is a smooth, rewarding customer experience. Let Joe show you how to take his professional expertise and put it to work for you. To contact Joe, go to jpeters.com or call 908-238-0118. Hey, so it's Joe Peters, and I'm back with Ron Monaco, and it is the 12th of November, and it is cold outside, and we're going to talk about Reddington Township. I keep wanting to say Raritan, but I had Jeff on last week. Um, Ron, I'd like to look, find out a little about your background. Okay. You're, you're Hunterdon County born and bred? No. Uh... I'm here 41 years, and my wife and I uh, moved here from Bridgewater. We originally uh, had friends in Reddington and loved Reddington and Hunterdon County so much that we decided to move, and we found ourselves a place and uh, been here ever since. Wow. We moved ourselves 20 years ago into Clinton Township area. We lived in Clinton Township from one little soiree into uh, Tewksbury for the last 20 years, and we still feel new because people here are <laughs> yeah. here forever. Yeah. And yeah. I uh, I don't think I'm ever going to go anywhere else. I think I like it here well enough to stay here, but there's different ends of the township. For yeah. instance, we're right in Beaverbrook, so we're off on 78, and my office is over in Warren Watchung. For me, that works. Marilyn's retired from Rutgers, and she does a little part-time thing at Costco, so it's eight miles up and down that works. So yeah. we were looking at the apartments who were building, I guess Jack Custis building them over there, at least they're behind his thing, and we said, look like great apartments, but this isn't where we want to be. We want to be up on 78. Yeah. And when I had Janice and John on, they said, well, a couple of years we'll be putting some stuff up. Will, we, gotta, we all will be putting stuff up, yeah. all the towns. We've got to sort through this affordable housing. Yeah. yeah. So where'd you go to school at, Ron? Uh, well, my bachelor's degree is Actually, I have a checkered career, aerospace engineering. Wow. From Polytechnic Institute. And then I went, uh, switched a few years later after the, uh, the aerospace industry took a tank after, after the lunar module uh, landings. Right. And I got my MBA in finance. Okay. Uh, and then got into cost and finance. And where was Polytech? Brooklyn. Brooklyn Polytech. So I applied, I applied to Brooklyn or Rensselaer and got accepted to both. And then my father was with Friar and Arsenal and it folded and we didn't, we were sort of uncertain. And I said, well, I'm going to work for a year. And then yeah. one thing led to another. I never finished. Yeah. I did go to Rutgers for seven years at nights, but yeah. never finished. But I often said I'd be unemployed in Wichita, Kansas anyway. So it probably <laughs> didn't matter. Yeah. At night it's tough. I did my MBA at night. So that wow. was... So most people think mayor's a full-time job or, or even township uh, planning manager, but right. it's, I'm sure, a part-time passion. What do you do full-time? Uh, well, I, was, uh, I retired recently from the Port Authority. I was assistant uh, director for cost management at the port. Okay. Uh, I still miss it, but you've got to retire sometime. You know? Wow. But it gives me all the time now to, to do all the extracurricular stuff that I used to try to do on the side. So I'm enjoying retirement. Where were you based with Port Authority? Uh, well, it was the World Trade Center, but after it went down, we were in uh, Newark and then Jersey City, the engineering okay. arm. Wow, wow. Yeah. Some of the stories you must have to tell. Oh, me. it's it's amazing. The mm -hmm. you know, uh, I joined them right after 9/11. Okay. And I'll never forget it. You know, I, there was such a pall over the entire place, and people didn't say a word about it. Nobody wow. spoke about it at all until at least a year or two later before Definitely. anybody would even talk about it. You know, until their, because everybody had their own personal experience. Right. You know, um, and uh, 
they lost, I mean, for instance, the secretary of our group was lost wow. in the building. She had come down all those 72 flights of stairs and then decided she was gonna sit and rest. She just couldn't move anymore and they never saw her again. I had a fellow, I'm trying to remember where I knew him from. He got out of the building, got hit by a falling body. Oh. Can you imagine? Oh. I mean, that's dead. Well, fortunately for the poor guy, falling or a woman, but um, it was yeah. a horrible time for a lot of people. It was. I remember that morning I was in Minneapolis. We were at the convention center. We had a user's group. I sold software to the retail vertical. And we were in Minneapolis at this user's group, and my daughter called. She said, Dad, where are you? And I said, I'm in Minneapolis. She said, thank God, plane just did. And, and you know, we didn't know what was going on. I said, it had to be a Piper Cub. She said, no, it wasn't a Piper Cub. <laughs> it was the width of the building yeah. when you looked at that, wow. that shot. What well, I was in I Disney World, actually, with the family. Wow. And that was one of the few times that Disney World closed. I didn't you know? realize that. Yeah. And uh, they did a magnificent job. All of the people from all of the stores came out, all the employees, and lined the path as everybody just quietly walked out, nobody said a word. Wow. Just walked out of the park. We had people on planes to Australia, mm. and they didn't announce it till they landed, and then nobody would believe them. Yeah. We had people that landed in Newfoundland because they couldn't get back into the country. We must have had two dozen people on planes that day. Yeah. And the stories they told us were like, my God, it was hard enough when you knew what was going on, but you, yeah. you thought somebody was kidding you when they started right. talking about right. it. Right, yeah, it was just crazy. So you've been in Reddington 21 years then? For, 41. 41 years, wow. And yeah. you said you've served as mayor several times. Yeah, I had five terms as mayor, 21 years on the township committee. Okay. Um, from 1983 to 2003, uh, and then, but I've stayed on, on the planning board, and I'm chairman now of the planning board in Reddington. So, what are, what were the accomplishments so far in 09 and 19? And we'll talk about what's what's going on for 20. I, sure. and I know affordable housing is probably a big. That's part of the 500-pound that. gorilla yeah. for not just Reddington, but most, right. you know, towns in in the state. Uh, and it's tough uh, because the numbers are just uh, out of sight. You know, they just don't make any sense. But, uh, you know, they came up with these es esoteric formulas. And our number, for instance, is, is 1,046 units. Between now and 2025? Correct. Okay. And to do that, if you were to do it all as what's called inclusionary developments, which means market rate units subsidize those at a ratio of four or five to one, You'd be building five or six thousand housing units. Right. That's as many as we have presently in Reddington Town. And this only takes us to 2025. So the whole premise of all of this just is has major flaws in it. Uh, they are not looking at the fact that the state's population is leveled off, you know, pretty much. Right. And uh, where are these literally millions of people would would be have to come? to fill these units over the next five years. Well, you first, we first met when you joined us at the chamber, the realtor board, where we took about 40 or 50 realtors and had the different mayors talk to them. And that was eye-opening. But since then, I had John and uh, Janice sitting here, and we're talking about putting up 800 units in one square mile. Right. Each will have 1.7 cars, and there's no traffic impact study being done. That's one of the, just one of the major flaws of all of this is planning goes out the window. Right. It's, you build the units, and whatever happens, happens. Uh, and we know we're not going to widen 78. No. Or anything else, pretty much. So I, where all these folks are going to go, I have no idea. As I mentioned earlier, my office is in Warren, and in Watchung is the sister city. Watchung is sort of like old money, Warren, new money. Mm -hmm. And average price over there, list price is about a million oh fifty, and average sale price is in the nines. Mm -hmm. And they're putting a lot up in that general area. But Watchung specifically, especially where the lakes are there, they can't get out of their driveway now in the morning. Yeah. And they're going to put up 800 units. Every place that can see where they're going up is almost for sale at this point in time. Because yeah. people are saying, this isn't what I moved here for. Right. Unfortunately, I think we're going to just have to suffer through the results of all of this. Uh, when every, all, anybody I ever talked to, any other town, all say the same thing. Right. You know, this is madness. You know, it's going to hit schools. It's going to hit, tra you know, transportation. All of these things, the tax rates and everything. But there's nothing you can do. You can't go against... The New Jersey Supreme Court. They have made this decision and they are very 
almost vengeful if you, if you try to buck, buck it. So nobody really bucks it. Just a few towns have, and they've really suffered, like South Brunswick. Mm. This court actually in South Brunswick, I don't know if you're familiar with that, they came in and nullified the planning board and, and appointed a person wow. to do the planning for these people that wanted to build the housing. So but who is they? I mean, there is no COA board anymore. No, but it's the court doing the court. this. So it's just, there's n no intelligence, go planning intelligence so going into it. So I have to presume it. the court is politically appointed. Right. So there's a sway to it. Yeah. Of course, probably, probably most of the court that is in now was from the last regime, but you know, it's, I remember we talked about it Chris Christie was at the Annandale Firehouse about a year before he went out of office. I don't know if you heard that talk. No. And he said something, and uh, although I lean conservative, I think Chris was as good as he was bad. I think, you know, mm -hmm. he, he's, he had some rough edges. But he said, look, you people pay extra taxes to live here. And he says the extra taxes that you pay to live here are being divvied up to the Abbott school districts, of which I think there were 16 at the point in time, to the point where we have no say what they do with the money. We don't hold the accountability that right. they use the money to do what they're talking about. And it's not like it's a term. It's a non-reversible right. payment. Right. So he said, I think $1,800 per household in Clinton Township were going to Abbott school districts. Right. That, I, I discussed this with Marilyn because we moved here after the kids were grown and gone. And we wanted to live in a country. So we just fell in love with Hunterdon County. And we lived, um, we had a 4,300 square foot in Clinton Township. Two of us, it was insane. It was house lust. I don't know why we ever bought the darn thing. But it, it, we enjoyed it while we had it. Never called the cops. Never sent a kid to school. Never used anything municipality-wise. And we were paying $17,000 when I sold it in 2009. And we said, this is insane. What are we doing? And we made a decision to go rent for a year to, to we figure out what we wanted to do. Because my fear was it was dropping in value right. and that we'd be underwater if we didn't get out of it. And fortunately, we, we did get out of it after a year. Don't ever let a realtor price your, their own house. That's the worst thing <laughs> you can do. Um, and we're still renting 10 years later. We've moved a couple of times. And we're at a point where... I'm in my 70s, Marilyn's gonna turn 70 this year, and we're thinking our next move's gonna be one floor, and mm -hmm. it'd probably be luxury high-rise, of which we don't have any, although I'm starting to see some go up. There's some along Raritan, and we were just across from Costco yesterday, and they're scraping ground to put right. some up there. Um, you're putting some high-rise in, in White House Station, I guess. Well, I wouldn't call them high-rise, three stories. Oh, okay. You know, but that's about as high as we go. But there's going to be a lot of apartments available. Okay. Not only in Reddington, but if you look at a place like Branchburg, which is a lot smaller than Reddington, right. they're putting in 1,800 units on 22 and 202. Uh, just that's one little town. You yeah, because Branchburg's is a funny town. It's like so a mile wide long, and eight miles long. Right. right? So right. it long, starts skinny. all the way down by um, Rarit and comes all the way up to, yeah. the, to the 78. Yeah. So. Yeah. All of that, no matter what we put up, 15 or 20 percent has to be set aside for right. affordable housing. So the rest will be free market. Well, market rate housing. Market. And that's the question is where are all those folks going to be coming from? Right. When you, you look at the total of all the towns doing that, because we're all doing it. Right. You know, but nobody's looking at that from, you know, the 50,000 foot level. Right. It's all of us doing it on the ground. and. Whatever happens, happens is the way it's going to be. Well, this, the question I've got is the same one I had at the panel six months ago is what happens in 2025? I don't think there's a person alive looking past that year. No, not at all. And we're doing all of this because we have to. And I hate to quote Mark, but he says, I think most of the mayors are just falling over the wall, so I got to do it. And um, he's right to an extent, but I think there's a lot of people that do care because we got into the discussion at the end of the section at the Board of Realtors that it's going to change the composition of where we chose to live. Yes. And Janice, who's the mayor of Clinton, said it best. She said, these aren't people with snakes around their neck and tattoos. She says, I was one of them when I was first right. married. She says, these are people who just never learned how to earn enough money to live the way the rest of us live. So we really do have two social classes. We really have three. We have the old farmstead social class. 
we have the people that moved here in the last 20 or 30 years, and now we're going to have people that aren't earning what the rest of us are earning that are moving here because it looks like a good idea. I yeah. question transportation-wise. There is no mass transportation. There are no jobs. I, there's no jobs. And what we're doing, and I think Janice pointed it out, was we stopped building affordable housing because the new stuff that we're building was obviating the old stuff because most people can't afford to buy it anyway. Yeah. So we're going to change the complexion of the people that are living here in the politics of the general area. And at the same time, we're not sure people are going to come once right. we build them. Right. And if they do come, it's going to hurt something else that's going to go unrented. Yes. And I'll give you a good example of that. If you go down 20206, I guess it's 20, down through Hillsboro, they've put up going to be 1,600 units on mm -hmm. a, the left side by Royce Brook Country yes. Club there. Yes. And the mayor, Gloria, is on the board with us, and she says, we've used up the school population again. Where you and Clinton Township, we're 24% vacant right now. Yeah. So I don't know how Reddington... Reddington's population has been going down, but okay. it's certainly going to fill back up when these units are built. Wow. You know, uh, we may be looking at a new school, you know. That's amazing. It's it's unbelievable. It really is. So we're looking at 1,046 units over the next eight, seven years, six years roughly. Right. That's roughly two or three hundred. The the ones I know about that are going up is there is how many units are in White House in that project? And what we should back up and say, what we're trying to do is minimize the number of market rate units. Okay. You know, people, you know, we get accused out here of saying we're against poor people to come and, and live here, and we're not. As a matter of fact, I would love the state to just give us the subsidy so we only have to build the low in and moderate income housing. You know, it's the fact that we have to build five times as many units that's going to kill us. Right. With transportation and schools and, and everything else. So our whole goal in 2019, we've been working on this, is to minimize how many market rate we have to build. So we've gone, that one you just mentioned, which is Nelson Street in White House Station, is 72 units. But we got um, a grant for funding that allows that to be 100% low and moderate income. Okay, I was gonna ask not, you that. Not only that, what we, made it rental, and with rental you get a 100% bonus. So the 72 units gives us 144 credit, credits. Now if we had done that the way this, you know, the Supreme Court is telling you to do it, we would have had to have build 720 units to get the same number of credits. Wow. You know? So... You're very creative. That's, well that's what we're trying to do. We're doing, we're maximizing the seniors because at least then they don't have children going to the school. Mm -hmm. And it, 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 it's a need for having senior housing right now, I think, in, in Hunterdon. Um, so it's a diversity kind of thing. So we're trying to maximize that. Um, but it's senior, it's age-constricted and income-restricted. Right. Okay, so but, it's not like a senior of all money in the world. They have to be at a certain level. Right. Earning-wise, I'm not sure about asset-wise, but they do look at that a little bit right, as well. Right, they do. Yeah, the income from the assets. So we're trying to maximize senior, we're maximizing the rental because it's a double, it's two for one for mm -hmm. that. Uh, but there are two developments which are what they call inclusionary, where we're building market rate uh, to subsidize the, uh, the affordable. We were fortunate in negotiations where we got a 25% set aside, which normally the set aside is 15 or 20. We did a 25 with two interveners, there's people in the court that are challenging your zoning. Mm -hmm. um, so one is, they're both off of Route 22, one is 254 units, and 25% of that will be uh, low and moderate, and the other is 192 units, which 25% will be low and moderate. Where else are they off of 22? They're, they're off, uh, do you, I don't know if you know in 22 where the Gables is, uh, boarding house, and there's an abandoned diner. It's yes. straight back. It used to be an old steel fabricator. Okay. Interstate iron, which so was abandoned. What street is that then? There isn't a street. Okay. So it's going to be a new uh, street going in off of 22, straight back. So that's before, if you're going east, you got to the VFW? Right. It's before you get there. Okay. It's between Coddington and School Road. Gotcha. Right. 
And then the other one is is over by where Merck is in that area. Right. Again, off of the north side of 22. Hmm. So those are the two that we're doing as inclusionary. And at that point, we run out of sewer capacity. That's the other thing. We're using all of our capacity for right. this, uh, which we're arguing, arguing with the court that you know, we can't even open a grocery store to service all of these people because we can't use the sewer for anything except... Or a clinic. Anything. 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 Wow. So we've got them tentatively to agree that if and when we expand the sewer, that we could take a certain amount of it aside for commercial development. Right. in order to service all of these units. What percentage of Reddington has sewer service? It's not a lot. Very small. Yeah. It's really just White House Station. Okay. And then in Three Bridges, we have uh, a small, the Three Bridges area is connected to the Raritan plant. So okay. it's a separate sewer district. So that, the Raritan sewer is sort of across from Northlands right. in that general area. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's, that's, it's mind-boggling what we're putting, what we're made to put ourselves through in order to live here and yeah. survive. Yeah. Um, you're saying you're not at capacity school-wise, so not not yet. But it could but happen. But there's a cliff coming, you know, a wall, I should say, I guess, coming. So that's and you said there the upstairs of that farm. I forget what it's called. But it's got three buildings that look like barns. Oh, the shops at the farm? Shops at the farm, right. that's, that's all affordable. Right, that, the, the upstairs. We, what we did there was, that, which was unique too, is that instead of having residential subsidize right. the affordable housing, we had the commercial subsidize the affordable. So those units we got. I didn't know you could do that. Well, we didn't know either until we tried. Okay. <laughs> so, and then also the one near Walgreens, that other development there near Walgreens, that shopping right. uh, plot, those upstairs units are Mount Laurel units as well, oh. subsidized by the by the retail. So that's that's a nice way to do it because then at least you get some retail, mm -hmm. some services and stuff, and and you also get credit for affordable housing. So right at County Line Road, as our offices are in a corner there, so I've seen these apartments go up, and I think they're called whatever the golf course is, Fox Fox Hollow. Right. Hollow. They're free market with some. Affordable? Affordable units. Yeah, that's Branchburg. That's right. Branchburg. Okay, so that's getting in. Yes, because you went across County Line. Right. right. Wow. Yeah. So how many units in total this year go up then? Well, if I don't think they're certainly not going to all be built, but we've got in our plan right now somewhere around 850 total units mm -hmm. uh, that'll be going up. That includes the Nelson Street and these others that I've talked about. Uh, and the seniors in Three Bridges, we have one senior all, all affordable development proposed. That's not approved yet. You know, we're looking for uh, nonprofits to work with, right? In order to get that put in. But again, that's going to rely on uh, on the grant for the for the financing of it in order to make it work. So there's that is a lot there. You got a full, full plate for a part time job. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we work. We work really hard on this to try to make it have the minimum impact. Mm -hmm. on, on the town in terms of all those services, yes. you know. What about just free market housing? What have you got planned there? Well, obviously the town is zoned um, right. for, for mostly for residential. Um, it's been slow in terms of new developments. When I, I've been on the, on the planning board for 33 years. I remember back in the late 80s, um, we used to have back-to-back -back meetings because we had so many developers coming in, um, taking every 100-acre farm and carving it up into development. That's when we started the, uh, the farmland preservation program um, in order to at least preserve some of these farms before they were all built upon. What uh, percentage of Reddington is farmland preserved? It's a good percentage. I, I don't have it in the back of my head now, but we're talking about thousands of acres that are preserved. And I'm, you know, we first started our program before the state program it was the first year I was mayor in 1986. And we went to these farmers and said, we'll give you an option if you'll sell to us uh, eventually. And we paid them for one acre of development rights, even though there was no state program to get reimbursed from. Right. But then when the state program came along, we were reimbursed for those funds, which was terrific. You know, it was, it was a great way to, 
to get a, a leg up before the farms, because the farms, like I said, were coming in every month. 100 acre farms were coming in multiple ones to be developed because we were right on the edge yeah. of the development. Now on the planning board, we cancel meetings because of lack of agenda. Isn't that interesting? You know? So we don't get, you know, we've either preserved or developed, literally, um, almost just about everything in town. Well, a couple of thoughts. When I did Leadership 100 and I did Leadership Somerset as well, when I did Leadership 100 and they took us down and showed us how it worked as far as farmland preservation, I think there's a big percentage of 100 and County is farmland yeah. preserved, something like 20, 25 yep. percent acreage-wise, and more going in every year and big big investments into farmland preservation. But when we took a look at what's happening, I can remember going and listing a piece of property all the way down in the Amwell. So if you'd want one more block, I think you'd have been in Mercer County. Mm -hmm. And we just put it up for sale. The guy's father owned it. I took a ride around with him on a deer truck and it was 20 acres, and it was zoned five acres, so it was subdivided, you could only put three houses up. And I didn't get home when the phone rang, and one of the neighbors wanted to buy it, and he wanted to take it to farmland preservation. Well, I didn't realize that, in effect, they get a $10,000 an acre assist, or something, roughly, yeah. to do that. And he also wanted to take it uh, organic, which we couldn't document, so they had to start from scratch. Yeah. But there's a lot of, like, Christy Whitman's, I, I, I think the world of Christy, so I'm not using her as a bad example, I'm thinking of her as a good example, where neighborhoods have got together and in order not to have the kind of development yes. that we were seeing way back when, have taken a lot into farmland. They take matters into their own hands, right. which is really the way it should be. I mean, if people right. want to watch that field be open and whatnot, then the best way to do it is to go ahead and, and buy it. Right. You know, And then, as you say, you can get reimbursed from the state if you preserve the property, you can get a lot of your money back. So then something happened somewhere after 2005 and before 2010 or 12, and that was people stopped migrating out this far. Yeah. And I used to say that people would go to Route 31 plus about a mile, which is Clinton Township, Barron Township, that's as far as they wanted to go. Yeah. And then they sort of only went to 287 plus about a mile, which is Bridgewater, which is red hot right now. Yeah. And now that I'm selling further to the east, I'm talking to guys up in the hills, and they're saying, Joe, you're not coming anywhere near us. They're 15 miles away, a bird flies from New York, and they stop. That's yeah. as far as wow. people want to go. Yeah. However, Professor Fuse, Mark Salak are saying they're starting to come back because New York isn't the hot spot that it once was. Yeah. But I don't see it yet. It's not burning hot, that's no. for sure. No. That's for sure. But there is this slight turnaround. The population, for instance, in Hunterdon has finally started to go back up. Right. You know, or at least stopped declining. Well, Mark, you were, were you at this? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so they said there were two people and he's still looking for them. Well, I just talked to Chris because I got Stedman Graham talking tonight and he's got two seats available. So I got an idea. Find a two to Mark Ham, find and give him the seats. Um, I think we have a challenge on our hands just living in Hunterdon County. Yeah. And bully for you that you repurposed the Merck, although I understand from Mark there's only about not a lot of people there. We're not sure where they're going with that. They're trying to bring folks in, I guess, yeah. as a technology park. Is that what they intend? Yeah. Subdivide? Yeah. And, yeah. Okay. Whether it's actual subdivision or whether they're just leasing or whatever the case may be, right. they're trying to make this a, a, a type, well, as it says, science and technology park. Well, there's a few others. There's one in Homedale. There's yep. one out on 287, and they're working, but yep. they're much further to the east. Oh, yeah. Homedale's not. Yeah, it's, it's south, Homedale. I mean, it's a distance. You can commute to New York easily from there. I mean, There's more transportation. Yeah. From there. Which, I mean, they said the three things we don't have is mass transportation. We don't have internet, which is a problem. And now G5, or whatever it's called. Yeah. Uh, as I said, I work with Somerset County. And that's why I question what happened with the Merck property. Because in Somerset, they're, they're either gutting it and rebuilding it from the inside out, or they're raising it putting up new buildings, it's just not worth fixing the old ones. And if you go down in Piscataway on Centennial Avenue, they've got down lots of good looking buildings and just rebuild them. I'm just amazed at that. I don't understand why you just can't refit them, you know. Right. I, I mean, for instance, Merck is an absolutely beautiful, stunning it's, building inside. There. It's absolutely stunning. Um, but they say that that's 
outdated as well. And I, I remember when they were building it. Yeah, you know? uh, 25 years ago. Yeah. yeah. So I have an electrician, because I do residential real estate, and I got to meet him at 8 o'clock in the morning on a Sunday. The only time he's available to look at a small project for me. He's doing me a favor. I say, Where, what are you doing here? You're so busy. He says, we're up on Route 10 in, in our Symphony Whip in the area. He says, and we're doing just what you, I talked about, gutting buildings. He said, I got 20 subs working for me. We're working seven days a week. And these guys never made this kind of money in their life. Wow. He said, so guess who they're voting for? <laughs> so in effect, we have a thriving um, commercial re renaissance going on. Mm -hmm. And I understand everything along 78 and 22 is just a new, about been leased out at this point in time, yeah. too. Yeah. That's good news because yeah. when I, in 16, when I did leadership, we were at a 40% occupancy rate, and I'm sure in the boonies, there's still high occupant, uh, yeah. vacancy yeah. rate. But along, out on 78, the old, uh, what's that one in uh, in Franklin, or Union Township? Uh, oh yeah, Ingersoll. Not Ingersoll. No, I don't know um, which one you mean. That's yeah, that's, that's empty. That is. Yeah. yeah, they're trying to figure out what to do with that one. So, people say to me when I talk to them, about the problems we're having, what changes it? And I listened to Professor Hughes, who says, I think self-driving or autonomous vehicles change mm. it. And I've watched, a, I'm really into technology. I, grew, I was in IT, and I'm sure you what I did grow up in IT, and then I sold IT for SAP and Oracle for years. And I did the retail hurdle. It wasn't the leading edge, but there was a lot of retail. So, although today, retail, I've seen I mean, a couple of stores yesterday, I'm saying, why are they open? But let's stay on track. In effect, I think it's a combination of a couple of things that bring people back. I think autonomous cars are not ready because they can't figure out what they can't figure out. So when a truck makes a new turn in front of an autonomous car, the car, everybody dies because uh, they never thought that would happen. Okay, but it does happen. But it happens. <laughs> yeah. It happens to me. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, my God. It happened to my son, too, because he's got six vertebrae. Oh, wow. and, and it was state, state insured because it was a state vehicle so it took forever to collect yeah. so i think it's got to be a combination of a couple of things i think it has to be autonomous cars something like high speed uh communications where we put a little thing in everybody's bumper so we can't hit each other and take those autonomous cars and put them in the fast lane that's not there anymore the whole yeah, HOV yeah lane. the hov lane and let those guys go 100 miles an hour and when they get within so and so there's gonna have to be turnovers but take it a step further yet yeah, and maybe make it high-speed 100 passenger tandem buses mm -hmm. where we can run people from New York City to 100 and County in 20 minutes, and then people start moving back. Right. Because it, it's still the best place in the world to live. Yeah, it is. It really, I believe it is. I know Mike Kerwin, and I listen to him talk, says if you get in the car and you leave North Airport and you head west, what's the first nice place you hit? And it's Warren Watchup. Mm. You know, it's when you come into Somerset County. Yeah. There's a little bit in Gillette, there's a little bit in Sterling, but it's really, he said, so we've got it and it's happening. And I sold the woman who runs talent acquisition for Santa Fe a house last year. And I went to their kickoff meeting. It was part of the 100th celebration for Somerset County. And they're bringing like 270 people in to that one plant just south of Bedminster on 206, I guess it is. Mm. I never get 202 and 206. Was going to mix up, but there's like six of those. There's a Nestle's going on, there's a couple of chemical companies going on. So, Somerset County is getting the companies to move in, yeah, a lot quicker than Hunter County is because it's closer to New York, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And then you've heard all the stories about millennials, yeah. they all want to be closer to the city, they want mass transit, right. they want all these different things, and that's purportedly the reason why. Things have slowed down so much in places like Hunterdon. You know? I think it, 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 it's a continuous cycle. There's no homes that are going to come by in Hunterdon County unless they're, and if you earn $50,000 a year, just taking 30% of your gross, which is what they'll get you a mortgage on, that's $1,250 a month. You can't you can buy anything. You can buy that. anything. So you need two people earning 50. Now you're earning 100, you can afford 2,500. Yeah, we have some, not a lot. We have some. So we're sort of forcing them to go elsewhere. But what happens when they go there, Ron, is they, it costs twice as much to get your shirt clean. It costs twice as much to park and get a cup of coffee. They spend all of the money that would be going towards an eventual house purchase right. on just living in that lifestyle. 
Well, and it'll be interesting though to see with all of this affordable housing going up, those those people making fifty thousand dollars qualify. Right. You know, so they're they can come out here, but then then they've got the commuting costs and all the other costs associated with being all the way out here. So I just wonder how the, all that's going to work out. You know. I think everybody does. You know, and we're also creating a class of folks that in the past you used to buy a cheap house right. and it would uh, appreciate in value and you'd sell it and you'd move up. Now you buy an affordable unit, it's fixed. You you don't it doesn't appreciate like the market rate units. And in some do. places you actually have to sell it back. You have to sell it back. You can't sell it free market. Right. So there is no bidding on it. Right. And it's a fixed you know, whatever the price is, it is today. The tax law, although it was good for stimulating the economy, doubling the minimum deduction has wiped out average house selling in New Jersey is three hundred and thirty thousand. We sell the average house at hundred and just under four and the average one in Somerset just under five. But three thirty for all of New Jersey, if you're paying taxes and interest on three hundred and thirty thousand dollar house, you don't get a tax deduction anymore because they just double you're getting it anyway. So you might as well rent. Yeah. And you don't have to save up some money and you can move whenever you want. The problem with rentals is you don't move on your own schedule. The landlord yeah. may say I need to house back for another reason, and but I think the investment. And there's have a lot of investors that buy little hundred and a quarter condos, mm -hmm. and they'll buy three or four, and then after about six years, they'll turn the first one over and buy two more. Um, they're telling me buying for cash and investing. I I have two guys that are investing in Spruce Hills, which is up in Glen Gardner. They're paying paying cash, 120, 130. That they're running 55 percent gross income to expense. Hmm. Now, if you mortgaged it, you'd be losing money. Yeah. So I'm saying, I think getting into small housing, 250 to $350,000 housing, you don't get the high homeowner association problem. Right. And, and the fees are tough. I lived in um, one in Edge of Tewksbury uh, and Reddington called Hunter's Glen. I mean, it was an old money development. It wasn't a 55 plus, but the the homeowners association because they did their own septic deal was into the six or seven hundred dollars because you had this it was 130 a month for the septic fee yeah i'm familiar with that one yeah ago. and i remember the board used to ask me joe you're in real estate what you should do i said you got to get this under 400 bucks you never get to sell these places yeah. you know yeah. assess it rather than stick a monthly it's another tax bill you know right. it's it's really expensive so looking at reddington and looking at projects going up, are there any proposed subdevelopments? Regular market rate? Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. Right, right now. There, as I said, we used to get one a meeting, at least, or two a meeting, uh, but nothing. And it's because that open land isn't there anymore. It's either preserved or right. it's developed. I mean, if you go through Reddington now, when you see, th see things like the Buffalo Farm, yep. Schaefer's Farm, all those farms are preserved. So they're not going to be developed. Hmm. You know, so when you take it all into account, there's very little. The only thing that's left is is really the airport. The airport is 700 acres, and that's been a and that's been an issue. Yeah, I I, I remember it was an issue when I ran in 1982. So I uh, probably should mention his name, but Rob Montero is a builder here, mm -hmm. and and his wife has my hair. So I ask her how things are going. And she was saying this year's a little bit in last year, but last year he had like 16, 17 lots in one house standing. Hmm. But he can sell a house he built. This year it's a little better, two or three going up. Yeah. So it's coming back to some extent, but it's yeah. still not what it once was. And not I said, why not build smaller? I've been an advocate of this. Let's do what they did. It's a wonderful life. Let's build entry level housing just above color. And she's still laying costs to kill you. You yeah. can't you can't yeah. buy the land for it. Right. So right. we're sh shooting herself in the foot yeah. consistently. I'm surprised the land prices haven't come down because of that. You, you know? would think so. Right? Uh, but most of the time, land is taxed so low, and the people that own it have owned it forever, that they're just going to wait till somebody pays them the right price. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then whoever buys it has to get subdivisions, and that takes years. Yeah. The other problem we've got, we talked a little about it at the real estate meeting, is that the code is old. In other words, in Warren, I'll pick on a county in Somerset County, a town in Somerset County. You got to put up on one acre, and you got to put up 3,600 square feet. Nobody wants a 3,600 yeah. square foot house anymore. 
are we doing anything to change code to match today's requirements? Or is it not? No, I mean, in Reddington, you could, you could build smaller houses. I mean, one of the things we really don't like is the, what we call the McMansions. Right. Where you put, you know, like a, a house which is filling up the entire lot. Yep. You know, uh, it just seems ridiculous, you know, and it, uh, we've been very good in trying to, over the years, uh, just voluntarily trying to have a diversity in, in housing. For instance, Hunter's Crossing, you're familiar right. with Hunter's Crossing. That was put up after Mount Laurel won back in the early 80s, mm -hmm. and it was done, at that time there weren't any rules, all the court said was, you have to get rid of the curbing, you know, if you remember, build smaller units, um, have out we in that place we have outside staircases right you know it's it was really done in the spirit of Mount Laurel one to create less expensive housing I mean if you look at those units they're pretty small yep. they're all like a thousand eleven hundred square feet you know so we have it I think in Reddington ha Township I think we have a good diversity of housing you know uh, across the board but again being in Hunterdon County everything seems to be more expensive I know John is talking about just north of the Boys Penitentiary on, um, if you, I don't think what the next street is, but you turn left there and it winds up up in Highbridge. There's an old failed development of uh, eight or 900,000 dollar houses in the mm -hmm. late 2005 to 2010 era. And that's going to be, of course, 15% will be set aside, but the rest is going to be free market. Mm -hmm. And I said, but what level free market? You know, can I go up there and build a $400,000 free market? He says, it's yet to be determined. Yeah. But I think the man will drive it because we think we would like to build a one floor, if you listen to John and Janice that we talked about it, um, 1,800 foot structure under 500K and just build it our way so we don't have to live in a 55 plus. And it's almost impossible to do that because yeah. I'll give you a good example. There's a couple of pieces of land that Hendershot bought in Clinton. He paid two and a quarter an acre for it because mm. it had city sore and it was Clinton. And yes. the house he put up, which was a spec, is still standing a year later. So it wasn't a, and I called him and I said, I'll take the second lot if you can build me a house and stay under 500K. He said, I can't do it. There's yeah. just no way I can do it. Yeah. So we're pricing ourselves right out of where we need to be. And then this is Joe Peter's philosophy on life. We have a place in the Keys that we're going down to a week from Friday. And it's timeshare. I don't need to buy something anymore either to yeah. live in or to vacation in. There's so much available real estate. Yeah. You go to Vegas, all these buildings are empty. Yeah. So why do I need to own something? I can rent it and live just as nicely and not have the responsibilities. Any of, aggravation. Any aggravation. Yeah. So I think what people want, and my newsletter says it, is that what pe what we're selling is not what people want. I'm half Polish, and I can tell it's like a Polish bridge builder. We're up here of what we're selling, they're down there if they wants, and they can't find it, and they're going to Hoboken, and that's what's happening to the millennials. Yeah. Yet, there are people like myself that aren't going anywhere, and when I talked to DJ, who runs the local funeral parlor, I said, then how many people die a year in Hunterdon County? He says, I gotta think. I said, what do you mean, it's your business. He says, no, I gotta back out all the people from Pennsylvania to come back here to get buried. And I said, wow, that's an aha uh -huh moment. Yeah. They move just 20 miles, but they keep coming here to the barber, to the doctor, to the grocery yeah. store, and yeah. then get buried. So that's exactly what's happening. Yeah, because so it's you're less not expensive. close enough that that's yeah. big, but it, is, yeah, but it is happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I've heard that. I've heard lots of people go to Pennsylvania just over the border to get cheaper yep. housing. So let's talk a few minutes about Go Hunter. And I was just blown away by what I saw that morning. I know I had talked to your director in the past, and she, it's fun reason or not, we never got her on a radio show. But you pack the room. You told I call her our secret weapon. I can she hear is it. fantastic. Yes. She really is. She does her job so well. And we've grown the organization. When when she started, we had one other person. You know, we have now eight or so wow. employees and we do so many things in, in the in the county. And as we've said, transportation is so important. Nobody really thinks about it, you know. Right. And we're really the only only organization that's really trying to do something with what little we have right. in Reddington. Even when it's just a syncopating start stop time, so we don't have traffic jams every yeah. day. Yeah. It's it's a wonderful story and the awards that you gave away. If you ever have a seat open on a board, I'd love to talk to you. Oh, about that's it. great to hear. Yeah. That, it it looks like something I had a passion. I, I did health hundred and helpline for a couple of years and. 
Um, eh, I have Gruen, whatever. It, it's a great organization. But I looked yeah. at this and I said, I could get involved there. Yeah. That, that yeah. looks like a neat organization. Well, that's good to know. Yeah, I have a passion for it too because I think it's so fundamentally and fundamentally important where you live is to be able to get around right you know and it's so hard in Hunter. it but, is but you know we do lots of good stuff i mean I, one of the things we just did was the uh the, the solar sprints races with the kids in school we had 18 different schools in Hunter county they build these little solar cars and okay. race them and stuff it's kind of like pine box derby but it's yeah. solar I had a blast i was a judge on the line oh, and wow. i just had a blast because the kids are so enthusiastic and they're so into it, you know, and building these cars and well, understanding. Even, even what Mark did on the Hack Hunter to this blows yeah, my mind. that's fantastic. And I've started going to his meetups because I got with the fellow that runs the Zero Surge out there, which is one of his early adopters here in Hunter and County with his technical company. Although he only has seven and a half people, he's one of our few technical yeah, finds. Yeah. And I'm going to get more involved with it. It's a great county to live in. It and, is. And There's lots of good things happening. I think... Uh, we moved here for the right reason. And I remember reading in New Jersey Magazine that they said, eh, they trade about three or four houses a year out there. That was back in the 90s. And you'll probably, if it was the Smith House, it's always going to be the Smith House. It's never going to be the Peters House. You know, it's that yeah, kind of yeah, community. Yeah, yeah. The thing in Huntington County that blows my mind is three out of four houses I sell, I have to go buy a lock for the front door. People do not lock their front door. True. Very and, true. And that is, I said, I can't list it without a lock on the front door. I got to know who's in here. So... If you're thinking about a great place to live, I, I say come take a look at Hunter. I'd love to show you around. And Somerset's really nice too. But you know, when they touch each other, they look the same. But the further yeah. you go to the west, it's, the more cows and different. horses it is. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's just great. a neat place That's to live. That's why I moved out here many, wow. many years ago. And just from Bridgewater, you, you just went one more yeah, town. Just, to these, two towns, really. Just got a little bit more land. I could have my chickens. Oh. So where do you live at? <laughs> uh, in, in not far from White House Station, probably, okay. you know, uh, off of 42nd Street, you know, 42nd yeah. Street. Yeah, I go back there to watch the balloons. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, the locals yeah. are all back yep. there. Yeah, Neat. yeah, just Neat. off of 42nd Street. So believe it or not, we've used their time up. That went quickly. What did you want to talk about that we didn't talk about that we could spend a minute on? Uh, well, I, mean, I, you know, I love talking about Go Hunted and all the things that we do there. Um, but, we're, you know, in Reddington, we're doing a lot of stuff on the planning board. We're reviewing all of our ordinances. We're trying to make sense out of Route 22. In Reddington, we have a problem in that historically there's all these tiny little lots yep. and you don't want to develop with all these little driveways off of 22. Right. So we're trying to incentivize people to merge lots before they put up whatever they want to build, you know, to, to make it nicer basically right. and less congested because it's that friction of driveways that causes the slowdowns. That's, on the main, you know. that's really what's happening up in Wachung. Everybody's got driveway coming out to our main street. Right. And that slows things. They call it friction, traffic friction. friction. Okay. And that's what slows things down. So we're trying to do that. Um, there's, we're, we're looking at ordinances, and, you know, tree ordinance and sign ordinances and noise ordinances, trying to uh, bring them up to date. Like signs, I was fascinated by pixels and this thing called nits. With lighting, you know, learned all about digital lighting of signs and stuff. I don't know if they're in Reddington or if they're in Branchburg, but the little detailing shop that's there. I take my vet over there to every that's, second. That's yeah, Branchburg. Branchburg. It's just over they the line. drive him crazy. He lives in the Bronx and he comes all the way out <laughs> here because he wants to work here. And he says, I got to put my sign out each morning and take it back each night. I can only have it out while I'm open. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. And I'm saying, I can't believe that. That's the first I heard of that. Yeah. He's, it, it, it's almost like sales prevention. Huh. <laughs> well, Ron, great for coming on. I appreciate it I very much. It. I'd like to do this once a year and get you to come back. And, sure. Uh, Next time, I'll let you pick the subjects we talk about. Okay. Very Sounds good. great. Thanks. Thanks. And once again, this is Joe Peters, and I'm going to play my commercial, and then we'll have our next show starting up in about two minutes. One of the biggest decisions in your lifetime is buying or selling a house. Choosing a realtor with strong client communication, technology, and marketing skills will dramatically improve your chance of success. That's why Hunterdon and Somerset's residents rely on Joe Peters. Joe believes his clients deserve a smooth and seamless experience, not a roller coaster ride. As a Coldwell Banker sales associate with 20 years of experience, he's helped hundreds of people to achieve their goals and dreams, no matter where they were in the buying or selling process. Joe accomplishes this by approaching every transaction from a business perspective. 
Initially, he tries to fully understand your goals and dreams and make them his own. Then he takes the mass amount of data that's available and distills it down to a few understandable action points. And finally, he controls the entire process through technology and marketing. The end result to you is a smooth, rewarding customer experience. Let Joe show you how to take his professional expertise and put it to work for you. To contact Joe, go to jpeters.com or call 908-238-0118.